So this happened on the 18th, right? That, yes, the right? day after my grandmother's birthday. I remember that's why I was calling her, because I didn't get to talk to her on her birthday, because she was at a doctor's appointment. So Doing that thing, yeah. She has a, she's a diabetic, so they have to check her feet every so often. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so. And do you recall, like, about what time you were at the laundromat, or what time they came in? Um... Yeah, get whatever you need. My phone actually shows what time I called my grandmother, how long I was on the phone, and then when all the other phone calls started. Because, like I said, I was on the phone with my grandmother, so she heard everything that was going on, and I could hear her praying and whatnot in the background. And so, my grandmother, um, I called her Thursday, September 18, 2014, mm -hmm. at 3 18 p.m. An outgoing call lasted 11 minutes. I can tell you exactly because my sister oh, called okay. me three times after that, so 3.30 on the dot. Okay. When were you released? I wasn't released till yesterday, about 12 o'clock. So 9, 19, 1, 4, um, at noonish. I made my first phone call yesterday at 1.45, so yeah, maybe about 12 o'clock. Because I went and picked up my check from work. That way I could pay my sister back some of the gas money and the hotel money, you know, stuff like that. He spent the night in jail. Mm -hmm. He spent the night in most of the almost twenty four hours. Yeah. yeah. In jail for something I have no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs>so you're on the phone with your grandmother, you're doing your laundry mm -hmm. on Genesee Street. Um, what happens then? Um, I'm sitting there talking to her and I put, I remember because I put my work clothes on super cycle and I put my regular clothes on the regular cycle. But I was kind of weary because I didn't know if I put enough detergent in it. So I get up to check it and at the same time that I'm getting up to check it, I see a cop car, you know, pull up and it does like a U-turn and I'm like, oh wow, I guess they got somebody. And my grandma was like, what? And I was like, the police just, you know, whipped around. She was like, well, it don't got nothing to do with you. So mind your own business. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So, you know, I'm still kind of looking, but you know, I'm not letting her know that I'm looking. <laughs> but um, as, I'm, as I'm looking at him, I see that, you know, he's coming up towards the laundromat. And the laundromat is like, I can't, I can't remember if it's on a corner or not. I believe it's on a corner. So I thought he was going around the corner, but it turns out he is actually coming in there. And as soon as he opened the door, it's literally about as much room from me to the camera. He just launched at me. But I have one hand on the phone and my left hand in my pocket. And as soon as he opened the door, he just jumped at me. I was just basically standing here like this, you know, talking to my grandma on the phone. Yeah. So I was just like this with my phone in my hand. And you see the little distance we have. And as soon as he came in, he just, so I was basically just standing here like this. You're like this. Yeah. yeah. Trying to ask what's going on, what's going on, you know. 
he's telling me I don't have to fucking explain anything to you, get the fuck off your phone, you know. Yeah. And my grandmother was just begging and pleading with me to tell her what's going on and I can't tell her too much of anything. And then I was pepper sprayed. They visited some weird thing and I remember being up in a corner like this and you know just <laughs> and so there were no like official orders. No. No no, you know, put your hands up, no. He did that after he grabbed me. <laughs> what after he grabbed you, what what were the orders he gave you? Uh for me to take my hand out of my pocket. And he repeated again, take your hands out your fucking pocket. And then he told me to put my fucking phone down. And I told him, what's going on? Let me tell my grandmother that, you know, something's, something, you know, wrong. Let me give her, you know, a heads up. Just give me a moment. Let me explain things to her. Because I heard her say, what's going on? Because she heard the, the commotion. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to explain to her. And I'm trying to get him to let me explain to her. And he's just not caring. I don't give a fuck about your grandmother. Put your phone down. I'm like, um, no. <laughs> Cause at this point, like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, okay, I need my phone to stay on just in case something happens. You know, like if anything, my grandmother can, you know, at least hear what's going on. So she knows, you know, okay, I need to come to Rochester. This is what's going on. But even with what was going on, there wasn't too much to tell her or for her to hear besides the commotion because that's all that was going on. My hand is, one hand is right here, the other hand is right here. He has a hand around my, my collar. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure where the other hand is. I uh, think his other hand was down by either my pocket or his pocket. And you said that he pepper sprayed you. Yes. And when did that happen in relation um, to this? Crap, he he kept telling me to put my phone down. I'm like, no, let me explain to my grandmother what's going on. She's on the phone, you know, let me at least tell her something, you know, give her something to go on so she's not, you know, just right. sitting there. Right. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about your grandmother. And he is like, he said I was resisting, but I really wasn't. Both of my hands is in the air. And if you had me by my collar and you're able to grab your walkie talkie and say, I need backup. He's resisting. I think he has a weapon. That's what he said. Yes. <laughs> After that, he pulls out his pepper spray. And did he, any warning or did he just... He said, I'm going to hit you. And when he said that, I thought he was talking about his uh, police baton. Because at this point, I don't know what's going on. So it's like, I'm almost in fear for my life. So it's like, if he does pull out the police baton, what's going to happen once he does? And to be honest with you, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. I'm not ready to lose my life, not at this point. I have nieces, I have nephews, I have god kids. I love them dearly, I have family, obviously who love me dearly. They called me numerous times. <laughs> different family members, different households. I mean, I have family who love me. <laughs> you know, they check on me every day, so. All right, so, so he says he's gonna hit you, you tense. Mm -hmm. And then instead of hitting you, he pulls out pepper spray and blinds yes. you. He hits you right in the face. Right in my face. Okay. And then what, what happens after that? Do you get like taken down? Are you handcuffed? Like how? After, um, yeah. when, he, when he pulled out the, the mace, I actually tried to turn away from it. I turn away a little bit and in the process, process of turning away, that gives him the upper hand and he throws me up against the wall. And at this point, you know, the pepper spray is in my eye. So now I have this to deal with and also have somebody pushing and shoving on me. And now I hear other voices and whatnot coming in. And that's when I feel like other people on me and whatnot. My phone is already on the floor, so my grandmother is hearing me scream from the pepper spray. Um, I get taken down to the floor, and he tells me if I don't stop moving, he's going to shoot me. someone for not following police orders when we're asking I, her to I'm asking back. you what it the order very simple. I don't understand I your you order to not stand behind us okay you, you didn't ask me to this. not stand behind yes. you okay listen I'm not gonna explain myself to you what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up going to jail I'm trying to give you a warning okay 
Let's just back up. I'm gonna back up. You know what? You're gonna go to jail. That's just not right. What is it called? Cowboy says yes. Okay. And immediately when he says that, I hear my grandmother say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, please let my baby be okay. And she starts coughing and she's, you know, wheezing. Like I said, she has asthma, so she was she was really getting uh emotional and it was you know, you could you could hear it building, you know. And uh it was just it was just all too real. She's asking me for, she's asking what's going on, what's going on, and asking me to answer. She's praying, she's coughing, she's wheezing, and the phone is not far away from me, so I can hear all of what's going on. Meanwhile, I can't stop screaming because of how many people are, you know, just pushing and shoving on me the pepper spray. So. So they've actually put handcuffs on you and dragged you out, or? Yes. Or? They. Shortly after that, they threw the handcuffs on me and they threw me in the back of the police car. And I'm still asking what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about anything. All I know is that I was just attacked by police. Um, so you're you're taken out into the car and you're put in the back seat. You got mm -hmm. cuffs on. Um, um, I've actually, I actually tried to yell out the window to another, to like I said, the guy across the street and tell him to call my grandmother. And let her know that I'm okay, yeah. and that the police had have, have me. So I'm yelling the phone number, and cowboy comes over and tells me to shut the fuck up, and he bangs on a uh, the hood of the car. The hood of the car. Okay. And uh, um, he rolls the windows up, and now I'm just sitting in this car. I'm already hot. I'm already sweaty. It's like an all new torture within its own, and I keep hearing my grandmother screaming you know her praying and I don't know if she's having an asthma attack or not and I was really I, w I mean I was scared for my life but at the same time all I could think about was Lord please let my grandmother be okay mm -hmm. you know let me make it so that I can tell her you know I'm okay I was hoping that the guy had got the right number and oh, yeah. he was he came back outside and you know he was you know signaling to me and I looked over because I seen him you know waving his arms he just shook his head I'm like, damn, he didn't get the number. In the police car, it was just a whole bunch of trash talk. The um, the older gentleman that I told you about earlier, um, that was just driving the car. He was like, I'm gonna call your grandmother. Just, you know, relax. How do I open your phone? And Cowboy looks over and says, no, you're not. He's a fucking scumbag. Why are you gonna call his uh, grandmother? He's a fucking criminal, let him rot. <laughs> and I'm like, what criminal? What did I do wrong? Oh, I'm not fucking talking to you. What do you make? What makes you think I want to talk to you? I'm like, why wouldn't you? Is there a problem with somebody like me? Um, what a college kid? Uh, a guy who has a job? You know? Um, is it the skin color? What is it? What makes you not want to talk to me? Because mm -hmm. I'm not a criminal. Obviously, you didn't find a gun. Because at this point, they had you know already told me that they were looking for a gun. You know, um, the other, the older cop did. He was like, in the car, he explained what they were yes, doing. Yes, okay. the older cop. You know, he explained what was going on and everything. Yeah. And uh, he was like, "There's a gun. Don't worry, I'm gonna find it. And when I find it, you're gonna do, you know, time in jail. I'm gonna make sure you do your five years. And even after, you know, there was no gun found, you know, and we were already downtown, mm -hmm. he explained that he was gonna make sure I do a year for resisting his arrest." and you know not listening to what he has to say and he was like you don't fucking understand i'm like no you don't fucking understand i was doing nothing wrong you came in there and you ambushed me you had no right to do that you are a police officer yes but you are not above the law what makes you above the law what gives you the right to do anything that you just did nothing about what you just did was right if you're following the lead then follow a the lead but do it the right way you want to egg me on? No, I'm going to egg you on. You told me that you're surprised that I'm so stupid because I should know exactly what's going on. I don't know what's going on. As far as I can see what's going on, is this a bad cop making some really bad decisions. Did the other officer in the car say anything or was he silent during the nope. whole time? He, to be honest with you, I really don't think the other cop was 
intrigued or interested in anything that Cowboy had planned. Mm -hmm. I believe he was solely there just to do his job. Mm -hmm. And he said it. He was like, well, mm -hmm. according to my partner, you, you know, resisted arrest. So we got to, you know, take you down for that. And he was just he was a police officer. I don't want to see Cowboy on the streets no more. That, that's I the don't issue. want him to. That is the first. I don't want him to torment yeah. nobody else. I don't. I don't want these cops to continuously, continuously think that they have the power to do this time and time again and get away with it. Right. There has to be somebody to say, "Yo, this is enough. You're not above the law." Okay. My thing is, if you're a police officer and you're truly a good cop, then you know what? You would get the trash out every third every. Back home, it was every Thursday. Every Thursday, I took the trash out because you know what? It was trash. It needed to go out. I didn't want it in my house. Yeah. If you're a bad cop, you're trash. You need to be taken out. I don't want you in my house. If you're a cop, that's what you need to say to yourself. I don't want to work with trash. I don't want trash in my workspace. When you come in, don't you come into a clean desk? So clean your office. My thing is now, it, the way the law is and the way cops are, it's just a new form of slavery and you're just rolling over and tolerating it yeah. um, Martin Luther King he made a statement along the lines of if you're not against the problem or trying to help solve the problem then you are the problem mm -hmm. and if you're just gonna roll over and die then <laughs> you're the problem yeah, the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> you give them more power every yeah. time you roll over and die I seen a picture of a gentleman yesterday and it was horrible. Like, I thank God that I didn't sustain the in, in, uh, injuries that he sustained. But at the same time, it's like, he's afraid to come forward. And it's like, why? Would you really want somebody to go through what you just went through? Yeah. yeah. This is not right. Yeah. And, and it happens, like, uh, last, in 2013, we had, like, two huge cases, mm -hmm. three huge cases. Uh, Brenda Hardaway. That's I crazy. Get off of me, you gotta kill my baby. Hands behind your back. No. Come on. Yo, real talk. And they maced him. He was at the bus stop. He kicking them. Oh. You can't even call the police on the police scrap. Yo, he did. Oh. Come on, boo. Babe, babe. Come on, come on. Yep. Y'all see that? That's crazy. They beating on him. He was at the stop. Why are you kicking him? Oh, word to me. Yo, Scott. That shit crazy. And then um, Dwayne Ivory in his backyard. They, they really need to get all them videos and just show them. 
This is your RPD. This is your Rochester City Police Department. Right. This is what's going on in the last year from your police department. My mom used to tell me, take care of home first. And right now my home is right here. Whether it's Rochester, whether it's Syracuse, my home is right here. Yeah. Exactly. My home is all over America where a brother or a sister of mine or anybody's got to deal with police brutality. These people are supposed to protect and serve us and all they do is cause more harm to us. Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, the Black Panthers, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. all these men sat in jail fighting for what's right. And their cases was way bigger than that. If they can do it, then it gives me a little bit more inspiration to do what I need to do. And if I have to be the first one to stand up, then I'll be the first one to stand up. But I know for a fact that after sitting down yesterday and after what I went through yesterday, I am not the only one. And my thing is their strength in numbers. So if you have a situation like this, you need to come forward. We can't let the cops torment us all the time.